If it's not made from steel, it's made with steel. It is the most important of all metals. But how do we actually make it? Well, in the following video, I'll show you what it takes. It begins here on the dockside in Wales, where iron ore and coal arrive from Brazil, Sweden and all over the world. Those rocks get offloaded onto the dockside. And here you've got the main ingredients. Coal, which gets baked into what's known as coke iron ore with about 60% iron, as well as magnesium and a few other things. They get emptied into the top of one of these two blast furnaces, here a few hundred yards from the docks. Those furnaces are constantly running, the temperature inside them getting to over 2000 degrees C at its hottest point. Now we are basically at the very epicentre of this blast furnace here in Portava. and. The reason this is the epicentre is that this behind here is pretty much the hottest point. These are known as tuyeurs. They are pumping hot air into the very core of this blast furnace. At the very top, you've got your iron ore going in. Uh, you've got your coke as well, a type of coal, uh, and a flux as well. And that all goes in there into a big pile. And then essentially, as it goes down, it kind of melts and melts. But this is the hottest point. So it's only the starting point, really, of a process that takes that iron through and turns it into steel. And then after that, you get it turned into steel products, which are the kind of things that we recognize. But in a sense, it begins here. And it's quite an extraordinary place. Loud, noisy, a little bit smelly as well. And most of all, very, very hot. Then, every so often, they drill a hole in a clay section near the bottom of the furnace. And look what happens next. These are molten iron sparks as the liquid metal begins to gush out. This is pig iron, iron with about 5% carbon or so. It passes along channels like this in the floor. It's well over 1,000 degrees at this point, actually hotter than lava. And it gets poured into a kind of train carriage vessel called a torpedo. The torpedo takes the pig iron to another big hangar where it gets emptied into a vessel where some of the impurities are removed and the iron goes into something called a basic oxygen converter, which fires supersonic oxygen through a nozzle. And that removes most of the remaining carbon. The finished product is, yes, steel. And this is where you add lots of exotic things to give it special properties. Boron or vanadium for high strength steels, silicon for electrical steels, there's hundreds of different recipes. Now this extraordinary contraption here is where liquid steel is poured and then it is essentially cooled. So you've got water, cold water sprayed on it all the way down here through that loop going down here, that's why there's so much steam there, and gradually the liquid steel becomes solid, so it's cast into these thick slabs, red hot slabs, still glowing with heat. Why is it glowing? It's because it's about 1100 degrees C. If I put my hand anywhere near it, it's essentially going to be burnt. And this is only, in a sense, the middle of the long process between iron and finished steel products. That glowing steel gets cut with an oxygen flame into 30-foot slabs, which get lifted onto their next stop. Here, they're heated up again and slid onto the biggest machine you've ever seen, where the thick slab is run again and again through these enormous rolling presses, until they end up barely a few millimetres thick. What began as a 30-foot slab can come out more than a kilometre long. The coils are pressed again and galvanised and then they get transported to another plant. Then they're fed into enormous presses where they're sliced into shapes. This robot then takes two different grades of steel and laser welds them together. And here's the finished product. Look, the right hand bit of this door is ultra high strength steel. The bit on the left is lower strength. It may not look very high tech, but it's thanks to techniques like this that cars are lighter and safer than ever before. By the time you watch this, this steel will be in a finished car. And there are other ways of making steel, from scrap or even green steel. But for the time being, this is still the journey of steel in the UK. From iron heavy rock on the dockside in South Wales to a precision product we all use.